Hello people, in this video, let us continue with the clinical features of trachoma, right? In the previous video, we looked at the face of active trachoma. Now, let us look at cicatricial trachoma, that is healing trachoma, correct? So, basically, this face um, manifests in middle age, okay? So, it results due to continued mild grade chronic inflammation. So, basically, if there is chronic inflammation, mild grade, it, it, it will result in this, okay? So basically, why does trachoma happen, guys? Because of chlamydia bacteria, right? So basically, here they are saying that due to recurrent infection, there will be immune response, delayed hypersensitivity, okay? That is what they are talking about here, delayed hypersensitivity, that's type 4 reaction, okay? So in this, what and all you will see, conjunctival signs, corneal signs, lid signs, and lacrimal apparatus sequel. So here there are four things. Remember in the uh, earlier active trachoma only we saw conjunctival signs and corneal signs. Here you have lid signs, that is eyelid signs and lacrimal apparatus sequel also. Okay. So guys, uh, let us start with the phase of cicatricial trachoma. So shall we look at conjunctival signs? So the conjunctival scarring, okay, there will be irregular star shaped or linear scar. Linear scar present in the sulcus subtarsalis is called as Arlt's line. So, here there is something called as ARLT's line. Okay. So, if it is in the sulcus subtarsalis, it is called Arlt's line. What, what should be present? The linear scar, right? Then moving on, concretions, concretions, right? Concretions. Let's look at concretions now. Concretions are hard looking whitish deposits varying from pinpoint to 2 millimeter in size. What are these? They, they are hard looking whitish deposits. They are hard looking whitish deposits. Okay. They vary in size from two, uh, pinpoint size to 2 millimeter in size. These concretions <coughs> are formed due to dead epithelial cells. Okay. And uh, inspissated mucus in the depressions called glands of Henle. Note here that this has no calcium or anything, okay. So, it might sound like calcium, but it doesn't have calcium. So, it's, it's a misnomer, okay. Then, coming to other conjunctival sequel. So, what else can be there? We already saw concretions, then pseudocyst, xerocyst, simplifaron, okay. All these can be there as in the conjunctiva. So, basically, what do you mean by simplifaron? This simplifaron means the Palpebral conjunctiva is completely stuck or partially stuck to the bulbar conjunctiva. So, if these two stick, then it will be simply pharon. Okay. So, what are we discussing? We are discussing trachoma, the signs of uh, what is this trachoma? Cicatricial trachoma, right? So, what are we seeing now? Conjunctival signs over and conjunctival signs. What did you see? How is the conjunctiva affected, guys? So, if this is the conjunctiva, how is it affected? This is the cornea, let us say. So, how is the conjunctiva affected? So, you will see what and all? Conjunctival scarring that Arlt's line. So, we saw you that Arlt's line you saw, right? Concretions because of dead epithelial cells. Then you can see simply pharon, that is the palpebral conjunctiva can stick to the bulbar conjunctiva, okay? What else guys? This Arlt lines, they are shown in what? In the palpebral conjunctiva, okay? So, we are done with the conjunctival signs of Cicatricial trachoma. Now, let us move to the corneal signs. What do you say? Okay, so corneal signs, guys. So, in corneal signs, you have regressive panis, Herbert Pitts, corneal opacity, other corneal sequel. So, in the earlier one, you saw progressive panis. That has become now regressive panis, right? Then there you saw Herbert follicles. Now, here it has become Herbert Pitts. Very good. So, Herbert follicles itself became Herbert Pitts. Then you have corneal opacity. And other things can be corneal Ectasia, corneal xerosis, total corneal panis, that is blinding sequel, okay? So, let us look at this uh, regressive panis. Basically, here what happens, panis means you know that um, if this is the cornea, right? You saw that some vascularization, infiltration and with vascularization. Infiltration with vascularization was called as the panis, right? Now, what will happen? Beyond the infiltration, if there is vascularization, so say this is the infiltration, beyond it also if there is vascularization, that becomes um, regressive panis, okay. Then coming to herb, uh, in what did you say, regressive panis, panis, psychus, have you understood this, panis, psychus, guys? 
okay panpsychus we are done with then coming to herbert pits you saw that they are oval or circular pitted scars okay they are left after healing of herbert follicles in the limbal area so you can see this is the limbal area right the follicles will heal to form herbert pit then corneal opacity so the cornea is becoming opaque right you can understand again in the upper part usually upper part of cornea seems to be affected more it may even extend down and involve the papillary area okay why does it happen it is the end result of trachomatis corneal lesions so the end result what will happen opacity then what happens blinding sequel okay now lid signs what will happen to the lid guys look at this uh, photo it might be a little gross so basically sequel in the lids may be trichiasis there's something to do with the hair right so trichiasis so this is trachoma trachomatis trichiasis okay tt you can see how the eyelashes are affecting right so then what else can happen thickening of the lid margin that is called as uh, tylosis right then entropion ptosis ptosis is the drooping of the eyelid right medarosis ankylo blepharon so let us look at these terms all these terms are very very new so what is trichiasis ingrowth or introversion of eyelashes that you can see here right ingrowth or introversion of the eyelashes is trichiasis what is entropion eyelid will fold inward the eyelid itself will fold inward what is tylosis the thickening of the lid margin what is ptosis ptosis is droopy eyelid correct so drooping or falling of the upper eyelid so drooping or falling of the upper eyelid is ptosis what is medarosis medarosis is loss of eyelash sometimes even eyebrows if it is lost medarosis okay what is ankyloblepharon ankyloblepharon is the upper and the lower eyelid sticking to each other so obviously you will see that if there's discharge right both the eyelids stick to each other in morning they can't open the eye then you have to remove it slowly okay anyways so that was about the lid signs for cicatricial trachoma then let us go to lacrimal apparatus sequel so you have chronic dacryocystitis chronic dacryoadenitis what do you mean by dacryo dacryo means uh, tears guys okay so some lacrimal apparatus is affected here so dacryocystitis will be the infection of the lacrimal sac infection of the lacrimal sac and what is dacryoadenitis in this the gland is affected that's all infection of the lacrimal gland okay how is it guys so this uh, we have finished the clinical features of the trachoma phase of cicatricial trachoma okay in this what and all you saw important important you see so our alts line then herber pit right herber pit in uh, corneal sign regressive panis herber pit op uh, corneal opacity right the lids what will happen trichiasis right then uh, lacrimal apparatus you will saw some infection of the lacrimal sac lacrimal gland so dacro cystitis dacroadenitis this is what you have seen in phase of cicatricial trachoma okay look at the corneal opacity guys where do you see this in the cicatricial trachoma what do you think you are seeing here in this image concretions okay dead epithelium all that 